All right, my friends, here we are, finally live! What is up? Dashing here for yet another edition of Octane, episode 40! And we jump straight to the action. As always, CMB Global Champion Jay Young, joined, of course, by his protege, the young Ben Stacy. Originally supposed to go one on one with Bloody Justice here tonight, but I just learned a couple of moments ago that Jay Young has actually substituted himself and put Ben Stacy in this matchup. So it will be the young Ben Stacy in action against Mr. Money in the Bank here to kick things off tonight. Maybe Jay Young still a little sore after what transpired last night on Shockwave, that loss. As he put it himself, embarrassing loss to Josh Omega. Young taking out his frustrations on Ben Stacy, giving him a stiff slap across the face, blaming Stacy for not being out there, for not supporting Jay Young in that matchup, trying to help him out. So now I guess Ben Stacy gonna try and prove himself once again to his mentor. As he prepares to take on Mr. Money in the Bank. Bloody Justice, who just decides what days he wants to come out with his briefcase and what days he doesn't. Bloody Justice, of course. Talking about the sore ego of Jay Young. Bloody Justice could be physically sore after going through that extreme rules match with Danger Cat not even 24 hours ago. Those two just beat the bricks off of each other. And of course, Bloody Justice in the end, victorious, unbeaten so far here in the new season is Mr. Money in the Bank and looking to keep it that way here tonight. What a show we have in store though, my friends. A little bit later on, Amare Ray Rivers after his massive upset win against Bison last week here on Octane, he will be in action at our main event. Going to be some tag team action as the team of Chris Diamond and Ugg York will take on the team of Jason Spade and Dave Turner. A preview of what's to come at Deadly Games, guys. Our first special event of the season quickly approaching. The eight superstars set to compete in the Deadly Games tournament. Hoping to pick up some momentum here tonight. And of course, we know the winner of that tournament will challenge Jay Young for his global championship on the night. Ben Stacy tries to start off hot here. Take advantage of the wounded bloody justice. Easier said than done, though. Double axe handle across the face. And Jay Young watching from ringside. The season started off well enough for our global champion with that win against Jason Spade, but that loss to Josh Omega certainly has gotten under his skin, and Ben Stacy is the one paying for it. Short arm drop kick. Of course, Ben Stacy fresh off of a loss himself to Morgan last week here on Octane. You know, for himself, he's hoping to bounce back with a win. And a big win for sure. Knee drop right here next to the announce table. My security guard standing at the ready. Can never be too prepared after what I've gone through. After the amount of times I've gone through this very announce table here. Pump handle, power slam, vintage bloody justice as Jay Young keeps his distance, shaking his head. Looks like he's not impressed with the performance of his protege thus far. Around and around and around and around we go. Ben Stacy dropped out of the airplane spin guys also to come here tonight desolation after their amazing return to cmv a couple weeks ago they're going to be going up against the team of ozakai and time here tonight that victory they picked up the triple threat tornado tag team matchup a couple of weeks ago man amazing to see Trauma and Bludgeon back here in CMV after so many years. But can they follow up on the win? By the way, we're already up to a count of 17 here. 18 now. and Looks like these two are not all that concerned. But wow, at the count of 19, they're able to get back into the ring. Hunter Quinn 
Also in action here tonight, my friends, and I'm sure Madison Wright is not looking to take it easy on the psycho killer after what he pulled last night on Shockwave, barging into her office, about to put hands on her. Might have, if not for Amber Reed stepping in between them. Great counter by Bloody Justice there. Knee to the eye goes for another double axe handle, but Ben Stacy able to avoid that one. Wheelbarrow, double boot stop. Tries for a right hook, Bloody Justice moves out of the way, but Ben Stacy a bit quicker, able to send Justice into the corner. Shining Wizard and the running Bulldog, great combination put together there by the young Ben Stacy. He's hoping to follow it up with something big, but Bloody Justice counters and right into the vintage spinning tombstone pile driver. Puts the leg, will that do it? Bloody Justice gonna remain unbeaten here in the new season. Only a two count though. Ben Stacy looking worse for wear. Look at this, Jay Young has finally seen enough coming to the aid of his protege. And inverted Tanahashi clothesline. Look at that, Young not happy that he had to jump up onto the apron there though. Shouldn't have to, he believes. Doesn't do Stacy much good though. Bloody Justice with the upper hand once again. I'm just gonna clobber Stacy while he's down. And Jay Young's gonna have a lot on his mind defending his global championship at the Deadly Games event against the winner of the Deadly Games tournament. A lot of credible competitors in that tournament. I think any one of them would be a stiff challenge for Jay Young. No matter what shape they're in. Look at Bloody Justice rallying the city of the universe saying it's time to delete Ben Stacy. Knocks him off the apron down to the outside. Stacy, and he does sending Bloody Justice back into the ring. Man, what's going on tonight? Tracy James back in the production truck or what? Pele kick. To the arm, followed up by a Spanish fly. Now Ben Stacy starting to find his groove. Kick to the side of the head, gonna bring it to an end, however. Jay Young continuing to watch from ringside. You know, I, I gotta say, he, he's not been the greatest mentor to Ben Stacy over the last couple of months, physically abusing him on multiple occasions. And then again, oh, big fucking toss by Bloody Justice. And you're being trained by someone the caliber of Jay Young, who is trained by someone the caliber of Dave Turner. I guess you gotta, you gotta tough it out for that kind of experience. By the way, Bloody Justice did just go for the Justice effect. Stacey able to avoid it. And again, Jay Young gets involved, distracting Bloody Justice. Modified side slam, tries for a standing moonsault. Referee very, very lenient with Jay Young here. Tries for a clothesline. BJ countering it with a spinning soul kick. Goes for a straight jacket. DDT. Pretty apropos. Couple of shots to the gut though by Stacy. Goes after that arm. Hook to the jaw. And Stacy. Oh, a suplex cutter into the pin could this be a big much needed win for young ben stacy no only a two count but back to the corner he's not finished stacy beckoning for bloody justice to get into position for a punt kick to the arm guys and hoping that that was enough to stun bloody justice but mr money in the bank snapping back with Sisters Joy, hooks the leg. Jay Young frantically distracting the referee though, trying to give his protege as much time as possible to kick out here. The referee busy fixing the top turnbuckle that Jay Young was playing around with. One, two, and it's enough. Thanks to Jay Young, Ben Stacy stays in this matchup. That was a good 10 count plus there. Bloody Justice hits that straight jacket, DDT. Into another pump handle power slam. The help from Jay Young at ringside, not gonna do Ben Stacy much good if he can't utilize it. Bloody Justice, 
Another spinning tombstone pile driver. I don't see Ben Stacy surviving that. Uno, dos, tres, bloody justice with yet another win here in the new season. And Jay Young looking less than pleased at ringside. Mr. Money in the Bank scoring another dub for himself. Remains undefeated here in the new season. What a 24 hours it has been for Bloody Justice. I have a feeling Ben Stacy's going to get an earful from Jay Young once they get backstage. Into our second matchup of the evening, my friends, and it's tag team action coming our way as Ozakai and Tai head towards the ring, but look at this! Desolation apparently wanted to get things started a little bit early here, assaulting Ozakai and Tai as they were making their way down the ramp. And well, of course, guys, we saw the amazing return of Desolation a couple weeks ago here in CMB after over six years away intruding on that rematch between Ozakai and Tai and Sweet and Spicy, making it a, a triple threat tornado tag team match, which they won. But it looks like Trauma and Bludgeon instantly looking to leave their mark on the tag team division, reclaim their place at the top of the food chain. This match is officially getting started now. Referee ringing the bell as Trauma and Ozenkai begin the matchup and quickly looks for a tag to Tai Makata. A rendition of the Doomsday Device from Ozenkai and Tai. Well, I'm sure that Ozakai and Tai Makata already had reason enough to try and get this win against Desolation here tonight for interfering in that rematch against Sweet and Spicy a couple weeks ago, but now even more so after that pre-match attack by the former Fusion Tag Team Champions. But right now, look at Tai stalking the massive trauma. Surprised the referee even agreed to start this matchup. Rolling neck snap by Ty. Damn, he all over trauma right now. Suffocating the big boy. Looking now to drag him back into the corner, but trauma says enough is enough. With some elbows to the midsection and a nasty clothesline. There's the tag to bludgeon. The former Anarchy Champion in his own right looks to mow down Tai Makata. Hits him with a gut wrench suplex. 
Oh, a Kai and Tai certainly starting off this matchup. Weakened thanks to that pre-match assault. Trauma back in off the tag. Tai gonna stand his ground as Trauma tries to go for another clothesline. Instead, a revolution knee drops into the pit. Imagine the steal this would be, but only a one count. Guys, still to come tonight, Shea Hoxton one-on-one -on -one with Fidel De La Rosa. That could be a potential match of the night candidate, no doubt about it. We've also got Amare Rivers in action. Hunter Quinn in action. And our main event going to be that tag team matchup. Chris Diamond and Ugjorn taking on Jason Spade and Dave Turner. All four men looking for some momentum en route to the Deadly Games Tournament. Shining Wizard by Ty Makata there. Trauma, though, just... Taking it. Tries to come right back at Ty. Keeps going for the clothesline. That boot to the chest did nothing. And now some wicked elbows. Drops into the pin. That could do it right there, guys. Elbows like that. I wouldn't be surprised, but Ty stays in the fight. Momentarily, anyhow. Snap, elbow drop. Moves out of the way, tries for a Shining Wizard. Didn't get all of it, enough to rock Trauma long enough, or perhaps not. Time Makata, oh my God, holy shit. Grabs him on the rebound with a clothesline. Absolutely wicked. But Ty with that kick, that tornado kick. Into the pivot, that's a quick break up by Bludgeon before even the count of one. Ozakai gonna run interference here. Allow Ty Makata to try and find a way to finish Trauma off. Pulls him back into a Hudakana Slowly picking him up as the Ozakai and Bludgeon continue to fight at ringside. Another tornado kick, but this time Trauma able to move out of the way. Basically drop kick by the big man. Followed up by a power bomb, but Cowan hit this tie into a roll up. One, two. What a steal that would have been right there for Ty Makata. Oh my God. Look at the striking aptitude of Ty Makata. This kid quick as lightning. Tag to Ozakai now. A tag also made to Bludgeon. This ring is hopefully reinforced to hold all this weight, maybe. Five to eight, eight near 700, 800 pounds. Combined, probably near a ton. Numerous stomps to the head. That seems to be Ozakai's main focus right now. Taking out that left hand of bludgeon. Quick to make a tag to Trauma while he's in the corner. Trauma. Not used to being thrown around like this, I assure you. Wasteland into the senton. 500 plus pounds crushing the sternum of Trauma. He's gonna have some trauma once this match is finished. Fixing to make that tag to Ty. Cheap shot by Ty, allowing Ozakai to stay in control. Watching Trauma into the corner. Might be looking for that bonsai drop. Yeah, Trauma bought nothing to do with that. Instead, he's looking to make a tag. And a tag he makes to Bludgeon. Double axe to the arm. Waiting for him to turn around. Bludgeon trying to play it slow, but Ozakai. Oh, bounce on top of him. STO. Ty Makata looking a bit worried there. Frequent tags by Desolation. Back in is Trauma. Ozakai waiting for him. Great combination pulled off by the former international champion. Using all of his weight to sit on the back of Trauma's neck. Once again, I say, Desolation can't be used to getting thrown around like this. Oh boy. Ozakai, I think again, looking for the bonsai drop. Grabs him by the throat. He's got him by the double chin. And a punch to the midsection. I'm surprised the Ozakai's tummy didn't just completely absorb his hand there. Again, he does it. 
drop kick by Trauma, still not able to take Ozakai off his feet. The 500 pounder just will not budge here. And another drop kick does the trick. Ozakai forced to retreat into the corner as the tag is made to Bludgeon. Bludgeon walking him down. Oh my god, a tree of woe. The Ozakai strung up like a deer. As Bludgeon knees him in the midsection again and again and again. Now just trying to keep the Ozakai grounded. Tag to Trauma. Love this teamwork by Desolation. That's what made them former Fusion Tag Team Champions, baby. Trauma playing around a little bit too much, though. Playing with his food. They are just focusing fully on that midsection of the Ozakai right now. Bludgeon back in off the tag. Ozakai panting as he gets nailed with a big boot. And a quick pin attempt. Playing it dirty as Bludgeon. And gets the win before Ty Makata can make the save. Via some shenanigans. Desolation finds a way to deal with the Ozakai here in this matchup. Ty Makata. Unfortunately, just a bit too slow seeing what was going on, trying to make the save. After that big boot, Bludgeon utilizing some leverage from the ropes there. And Desolation continuing to reclaim the tag team division that was once theirs. Our third matchup of the evening, my friends. Going to see some singles competition in the women's division. As Miss Magnificent A. Ellie Quinn, who has been unable to grab a victory so far here in the new season. Hoping that she will get a dub here tonight against the rookie, Astrid Stern, who I don't think it was a single person not impressed with her debut here in CMB last week on Octane, guys, against Precious Pratt. What a matchup those two had. Earned match of the night. No small feat for your very first matchup here in CMB. But, of course, Stern in the end was defeated by Precious Pratt. And like I said, though, I don't think there was a single person in the locker room or in the CMB universe that wasn't impressed with Astrid Stern's arrival here in CMB. But, well, she certainly did catch the attention of our women's tag team champions, guys, Zada Reed and Ashley Riot. Well, Astrid Stern was resting up in the the medical center here in CMB, approaching her and offering her somewhat of a deal, saying, "Hang out with us, and we'll bring you to success here in CMB. You know, join the posse. If not, 
Well then, your time here in CMB might be short-lived. Ashton Stern would seem already with a choice to make her first couple of weeks here in CMB. Does she want to stray from her path and join up with the resident bullies here in CMB and Zara Reed and Ashley Riot, or does she want to already make some serious enemies? Well, still happy-go-lucky as she makes her way to the ring. Even in defeat, pleased with Ashton Stern, as she should be with her performance. But oh, I'll tell you what, what a win this would be for Stern if she can defeat a former Women's World Champion, the current Miss Magnificent 8, Ellie Quinn. Right. Oh, being a bit cheeky with Danielle Reed. I don't know if that's so wise. No, Ashley Riot said that herself. I was like you when I first came to CMB. I was happy-go-lucky. I was all smiles, having a good time, but this place changes you. So here we go. Ellie Quinn, Astrid Stern, one-on-one. -on -one. Can Ellie Quinn grab her first win of the new season? Or will Astrid Stern pick up a massive dub for herself? Looking for a hangman's neckbreaker. Stern able to counter into a neckbreaker of her own. First Danielle Reed, the representative and a lover of Ellie Quinn at ringside. Beautiful drop kick out of the corner by Ellie Quinn. After being eliminated from that number one contenders battle royal a couple weeks ago on Shockwave. None too happy, spitting venom at a great many people. Amber Reed, as well as the arsenal of justice here in CMV. Ashton Stern going to try to take to the ropes, but unfortunately miscalculates. Goes right over Ellie Quinn with that moonsault attempt. Guys, still to come here tonight, Hunter Quinn will be in action. So will Amar Ray Rivers. How's he going to follow up on his massive dub against Bison last week here on Octane? And our main event tag team action, we see Chris Diamond and Ugbjorn take on the team of Jason Spade and Dave Turner. Momentum at stake, certainly going into the Deadly Games tournament. Clothesline into the corner. There's a shot to the midsection. Now pressing down on Ellie Quinn for nailing her for the Meteora. Strutting her stuff as she walks out of the corner. Ellie Quinn going to... Go to the outside. I don't know that she's going to find refuge out there, though. Astrid Stern lining her up, but I guess Stern. Going to err on the side of caution here. Maybe not! Ellie Quinn decides to talk some smack, and that was enough for Stern. Over the top rope, gliding through the air, man, like a hot knife through butter. But Ellie Quinn back into the fight, trying to send Stern into the squared circle and does so as Danielle Reed cheers from ringside. Astrid Stern taking a knee to the face. She's got a lot to contemplate right now. Of course, at this moment, she's got to focus fully on the task at hand, and that's Ellie Quinn, but will she take up Ashley Riot on her offer to join the resident mean girls here in CMB, or will she stand her ground and make herself some enemies so soon? A tough choice. It's Ellie Quinn rallying for Astrid Stern to get to her feet from Brett's rope. Missile drop kick, beautifully done. Stern pulled up. And potentially put right back down with a Falcon Arrow. Now it's Stern who's got to roll out of the ring, but Ellie Quinn tries for a suicide dive. Stern able to step out of the way. She was ready for it. Gonna miss that standing moonsault attempt. An STO in the back of Stern's head, smacking off the floor. That was not pretty. Didn't sound very nice. She 
furious elbow drop up to a count of three are we as Stern tries to fight back with a kick to the midsection now going to send Ellie Quinn into the ring Stern gonna get cut off and she comes through the ropes Ellie Quinn basement knee to the side of the head that could do it right there guys one two and it nearly does but not quite enough for many Miss Magnificent Eight to secure her first win of the new season Grabs that arm, smacks it off the canvas. Ellie Quinn pulling Stern to her feet. Takes off her head with a vicious clothesline and not done. It's all Ellie Quinn right now. She tries for a discus big boot. Ashton Stern counters it, cannot counter. The elevator though, into the pin. One, two, Ashton Stern. Much to the chagrin of Ellie Quinn here, much to her shock. Much to my shock, staying in the fight. Ellie Quinn keeps on the attack, now seeming to focus on the legs of Stern, Jesus. A figure four leg breaker doing just that. And now gonna be cheeky herself. Ellie Quinn in the driver's seat and fixing to keep it that way. Shots the face from side control. Goes for a stop. Stern still with some fight left in her yet though. Over the knee, Ellie Quinn goes. Multiple knees to the face and a big old one to finish off. Quinn trying to get right back up. Stern puts her back down with a DDT. Ellie Quinn though, not making this easy for Stern. Numerous knees to the gut. Into a standing moonsault. Hits it that time, but Quinn taking it on the chin like the champ that she is. Stern just throwing herself at Ellie Quinn with a headbutt and once again goes over the top rope, but this time Ellie Quinn suckering her in. Playing possum, guys, and it might pay off for her. Stern thrown into the ring. She's looking real rough right now. As Quinn tries to come up from behind, elbow waiting for her. Stern the quicker, some more knees, this time to the chest, finishing with a spinning back kick to the gut. Stern trying to set up for a kick. German suplex throws her down. Before Stern can get to her feet, Ellie Quinn tries to rush at her. Look at Stern! Headbutt after choking Ellie Quinn just a bit. Another great performance by Astrid Stern. The match not over yet though. Taking it to Ellie Quinn. Setting her up for a rip toward knee. Still not finished. Stern feeling herself right now. Rolling stunner. The stunner catches Ellie Quinn. One, two. And it is only a two count for Astrid Stern. Ellie Quinn coming to. Stern might not get the win there, but ensuring that she stays on top of Ellie Quinn right here like white on rice while she's got her hurt. Rookie potentially unsure of how to proceed though after her stunner didn't get the job done. Drop kick to the shoulder. And now Danielle Reed distracting the rookie Astrid Stern. Not even up to fall for it. Oh my God. What a stomp to the back of the head. That was disgusting. And now look at Ellie Quinn on the apron. Backing up Astrid Stern. Slingshot up again! What a counter! What a counter by Astrid Stern! A super kick catching Quinn mid-air. But once again, Ellie Quinn finds her opening for that basement knee to the side of the head. One, two! Still won't keep Stern down. This is unbelievable. Stern rolling to the outside, but Ellie Quinn making sure she's there to greet her. Puts her right back into the ring. There ain't no running away, says Ellie Quinn. But I don't think Ashley Stern is running away. Goes for the slingshot draw kick, and this time hits it. Followed up by a swinging neck breaker. 
Astrid Stern trying to stay in the fight the best that she can, but at this point it might be academic. Goes for a spine buster. Beautiful reversal into a DDT by Stern. Ellie Quinn trying to pick herself up. Stern right there waiting. Needed the midsection forearm smash. Kicks to the back of the knee. Goes for the midsection. Big old slap across the face. Knife edge chop. Right hook. Spinning back kick. But Ellie Quinn takes it all in stride. Goes for another elevator. Stern counters. Ellie Quinn, Irish Whip gonna send her off the ropes. Nasty spine buster laying Stern out, and that might do it, guys. One, two. My lord, bro. Astrid Stern, a fighter. We are certainly learning that. Not only in her debut last week, but certainly here in this matchup tonight. Now it's Stern. Waiting for Quinn on the rebound, whatever she was trying for there. Gets a big boot right between the eyes and a second elevator. Surely has to be the end of Ashton Stern. One, two, three. What a match, man. I'm telling you what, we still have some great matches to look forward to here tonight, but I'd say so far, Ashton Stern looking at another match of the night candidate. But it's Ellie Quinn who secures herself a win here in the new season. Miss Magnificent Eight finally getting back on track as of course Danielle Reed joins her. A love that could rival that of Aria. <laughs> I now know exactly what needs to be done. Well, Till Colval always with a plan, always scheming. And so far here in the new season, guys, things have been going very well for the Arsenal of Justice. There's no denying that. But things have not been going so well for this man over the last couple of months. And Hunter Quinn blames that solely on Madison Wright trying to tear him down, trying to make him pay for siding with Jackson Wright in the battle between siblings towards the end of last season. It has cost him his Intercontinental Championship. It cost him that number one contender's Battle Royal on Shockwave. And Hunter Quinn said enough is enough. Finally had Madison Wright cornered in her office on Shockwave last night. Looked like he was about to put hands on her before Amber Reed stepped in. Got between the two and forced Hunter Quinn to back off. So it seems like Madison Wright has got herself an ally in Amber Reed that's not going to just sit back and allow Hunter Quinn to do whatever he might be thinking about doing to our general manager. But first we are seeing Hunter Quinn in singles action here in the new season. 
Again, he was part of that number one contenders battle royal. Forced to watch as his old rival, Josh Omega, won that match. And he's been very vocal about that as well. It's still to come here tonight, my friends. We've got Shea Hoxton one-on-one -on -one with Fidel De La Rosa. We've got Amare Rivers in action. Big tag team matchup in our main event. Hyping the Deadly Games tournament coming up very soon, guys. Our first special event of the new season. Do not miss it. Not only the Deadly Games tournament, but also that triple threat match for the Undisputable Heavyweight Championship. It's Richard Jelani cashing in his right of passage championship. It's Josh Omega, and it's Bison. That's a matchup you do not want to miss. But here tonight, guys, Hunter quit. Poised to go one-on-one -on -one with the Asian sensation, the man who puts the rise in the rising sun, Japan's biggest export, and yes, indeed, the six-time, 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 six-time CMV World Champion Paul Devine suffering a loss not 24 hours ago to the Earl. So hoping to bounce back rather quickly with a win against Hunter Quinn here tonight. Paul Devine still seeking to prove he can hack it amongst all these young bloods, these new faces here in CMV, this new generation. So here we go, Hunter Quinn, Paul Devine at one-on-one, -on -one, a potential humdinger right here in the making. We've got a big week of action coming up here in CMB, my friends, of course, on the next edition of NGW. We finally crown a new NGW world champion. The finals are set, Sexton Stone versus Trevor Hannibal. Not to mention Deadly Games, our first special event of this season next weekend. Going to be a hell of a show. Eight men destined to go through pain and agony in order to get that shot at Jay Young and his CMB Global Championship. Springboard forearm smash by Paul Devine taking Hunter Quinn off his feet. It certainly is strange to see Hunter Quinn in trunks. Paul Devine, though, in the full mount right now. Stomp to the gut on the way out. Consumed with this vengeance, putting all the blame for everything that's gone wrong in his career over the last couple of months on the shoulders of our general manager, Madison Wright. But it looks like it's not going to be so easy for him to get his revenge if Amber Reed has anything to say about it. Paul Devine with a suplex cutter right into the pin. Could it be so easy for Paul Devine here tonight? Grabs the rope, but Hunter Quinn able to kick out on his own. Anyhow, I guess that was just some added security. Gets out of the way of Divine suicide dive attempt. Now it's Hunter Quinn on top, raining down the rights. Throw Divine gut first in the barricade. Now hoists him up for a scoop slam onto the apron. Absolutely brutal as Hunter Quinn in his offense. Certainly using the ringside area expertly right now as he tosses Divine back into the ring. Line to his feet, quickly throws Quinn right back down to the outside, tries for the plancha again, and this time connects successfully. And releases a combination on Hunter Quinn. Fires back with a cuck, a cuck, a kick to the midsection. I certainly hope not a cuck. Hunter Quinn fixing a cuck. Paul Devine here tonight. A couple of kicks to the face. Going to take Devine off his feet. Tries for a stop. Oh, crossroads. But back in the ring, apparently. And Paul Devine with a right hook. Well, Hunter Quinn. Hunter Quinn getting back into the ring. Paul Devine ready for him. But Hunter Quinn playing games with the Asian sensation. Oh, it looks like Hunter Quinn's not having it. It looks like he's... But wait a minute, Hunter Quinn trying to leave this match. But look who it is, Amber Reed on the ramp, stopping him. And Paul Devine able to take him back into the ring. Hunter Quinn pleading with the Asian sensation. Amber Reed not playing around. 
Looks like she's gonna be a new sword in the side of Hunter Quinn. He wants to get to Madison Wright. Gonna have to go through her. Tiger bomb by Hunter Quinn. Now realizing there's no escaping this matchup with Amber Reed guarding the ramp. A couple of stomps to the chest and a big old forearm smash to the side of the head. Divine picking himself up in the corner. Quinn staying his focus. Irish whip off the ropes. Vindication. Where are my voice Vindy fans at? Hook to the jaw, perhaps trying to set up the psycho driver. But Paul Devine was ready for it. Irish whip instead going to send him off the ropes. Devine with a drop down. Big punch in the midsection. That'll suck the air right up out of you. Have you gasping for breath. Spear! Spear from Paul Devine. One, two. But Hunter Quinn endures. At least for the time being as Paul Devine refocuses. He ain't finished. He's got a little something else for Hunter Quinn. Knee to the jaw. Going to spin him around. Pick to the midsection though. Hook to the jaw. Going to try again. Psycho Driver! Hook of the leg. One, two. Two. Point nine 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 Hunter Quinn arguing with the referee here, but this matchup is not over. And all that time he wasted complaining Paul Devine able to utilize now. Back in control as he's got Quinn grounded. Amber Reed continuing to watch from the top of the ramp, making sure that Hunter Quinn doesn't try to weasel his way out of this matchup again. Paul Devine glides off the kid. He's back into the full mount. He's just giving Hunter Quinn that work right now. Goes for the legs. Every single part of Hunter Quinn's body getting torn to shreds by Paul Devine at the moment. Rolls him up to his feet now, trying for a big old right hand. Hunter Quinn, though, sees an opening. He's going to take advantage. Snake eyes to Devine. A desperate pin by Quinn. Could he potentially get lucky here? No. Close call, but still no cigar for the psycho killer. Hooks the leg. That's Divine now. Quick to try and finish this matchup off, and he does! Paul Divine picking up the win here tonight at Octane. And, well, thanks in large part to Amber Reed. Preventing Hunter Quinn from running away. And a big smile on the face of the history maker as she watches from the top of the ramp. Hunter Quinn may have gotten himself into something he wasn't ready for. Trying to hunt down our general manager, Madison Wright, but now Amber Reed's involved. And that allows Paul Devine to pick up a great win for himself here tonight.
It is our tertiary main event coming up next year on Octane episode 40, my friends. A potential banger on its way here. As Shea Hoxton gets ready to go one on one with Intercontinental Champion Fidel De La Rosa, guys. And originally, this was supposed to be the agent one on one with Fidel De La Rosa, but Shea Hoxton deciding to put himself into the matchup after seeing what some might call a bit of hesitation by the agent earlier tonight during a meeting at the company headquarters. Shea Hoxton continuing to punish Xander Slate. Look at that, even making him stand in the pyro. That's got to burn. Hoxton has continued to abuse Xander Slate under contract, forced to remain within the company, and it appears like the agent... Not happy with it, not comfortable with it. So Hoxton telling him, take the night off, get your head on straight. I'll deal with De La Rosa. And then Nick and Shore tells Xander Slate, you better be out there supporting me. You better be in my corner and you better like it too. Of course, Xander Slate in the corner of Richard Jelani. Just last night on Shockwave when he knocked off Bob Luger, forced to watch. We also saw Bob Luger earlier tonight telling Xander Slate, hang in there. Don't give up. We will find a way to get you out of that contract and to make Shea Hoxton pay. Just hang in there, brother. And Xander Slate definitely having a tough time hanging in there. Thanks to Shea Hoxton. We're here tonight. Going to be going one-on-one -on -one with the Intercontinental Champion, Fidel De La Rosa, kicking off his season with a win a couple weeks ago on Shockwave against newcomer Andrew LeBreton. Looking to follow up on that with a big win. This would be against Hoxton. I can see Hoxton in the ring checking his nails. De La Rosa had a hell of a rookie season here in CMV. Last season, Started off as Anarchy Champion. Now here in this season, he starts off as Intercontinental Champion. And Fidel hoping that this is the season he rises to the top here in CMV. If he wants to do that, he needs to pick up some notable wins. And what a notable win this would be for sure against Shea Hoxton. Could it very well be a great next couple of weeks for the company. Of course, Richard Jelani cashing in his right of passage championship, guys. And it will be Jelani, Josh Omega, and Bison for the Undisputed World Heavyweight Championship at Deadly Games. Imagine if the company takes a hold of CMB's grandest prize, man. We'll never hear the end of it, and their power will only strengthen. That's the last thing Xander Slate wants. De La Rosa with a sit-out face buster. Sit on to the lower back and a knee to the jaw. Still to come here tonight, guys. Up next in our co main event, Amar Ray Rivers is in action. How will he follow up on his huge win against Bison last week here on Octane? And in our main event tag team action, is see Chris Diamond and Ugbjord take on Jason Spade and Dave Turner. Momentum on the line going into the Deadly Games tournament as De La Rosa locks in the Color City clutch. Speaking of Jason Spade. Elbows to the jaw. Set Hoxton free. He utilized the opening to slam Fidel into the corner. Throw him out in the middle of the ring. Like it ain't no thing, but a chicken land tries for a double stomp. Fidel goes for a close line. Catches up this Hoxton with a spinning soul kick. Goes for a big boot. Counters this Fidel action rolling out of the way. And now a great combo into another DDT. Putting some distance between the two as Hoxton picks himself up on the apron, but... Quickly sent to the outside. Jumping neckbreaker lays out Hoxton. Xander Slate and Richard Jelani 
keep their distance. Of course, Slate forced to cheer for Shea Hoxton here. Hoxton telling him, you better put on a smiling face. You better show your support for me. Hoxton now having Fidel by the nose. Here comes Jelani getting awfully close. As Hoxton has his way with the Intercontinental Champion. And another slap across the face. God damn. the back of Fidel, digging those nails into the skin. Up to a count of eight as Hoxton now trying to outmaneuver Fidel. Oh, Fidel gonna flip off that fan in the front row. I wonder what that fan must have said. Not a fan of Fidel's haircut. Takes about as Hoxton perhaps a bit premature. God damn. Stomp to the back of the head. One, one count. De La Rosa. Surprised he wasn't put to sleep. Now we get some double boot stomps to the middle of the back. Some more stomps to the exposed hand. This is where Hoxton does his best work. He's got his opponent down and he's able to torture him. Stomp in the corner, countered by De La Rosa, falling drop kick. Oh, but now look at this, Jelani distracting De La Rosa for just a second. But that gives Hoxton all the time he needs. Snap, German suplex. De La Rosa quickly in a roll to the outside, now realizing and this is going to be no easy task here tonight with Jelani and Slade at ringside. Great counter by Fidel. Hoxton's trying for a power bomb at ringside. Tanahashi clothesline. Knee to the kidneys is Fidel. Wasting no time trying to take this fight back into the ring. Able to start the season off strong with that win against Andrew LeBreton a couple of weeks ago. But Hoxton waiting for him as he gets back into the ring, hoping for the choke slam. Unfortunately, De La Rosa. Able to see it coming, now counters in the corner. Kick to the back of the head. Hoxton, German suplex as he slid under the bottom rope. Very slick. Stomp to the bicep, it's all Shea Hoxton right now. Power bomb. Oh my God, oh, trying to send. De La Rosa out of the ring. And now he just spins Fidel. Furious punch to the bridge of the nose. Kick to the side of the head though by De La Rosa. Might be slipping into the deep end, but the fight ain't over for the Intercontinental Champion here tonight. The schoolboy shoot! For a kick right in front of Jelani, he goes for the pin. But a Hoxton grabs the bottom rope. Great wherewithal by the gambling man. De La Rosa, however, got a little something else for the Chief. Spinning reverse STO into the pin. One, two. That's all De La Rosa's going to get, though. Hoxton remains in the fight, but certainly in very bad shape right now. He needs to think of something quickly to turn the tide, and he does. Zeroing in on the right shoulder. Of Fidel now goes to the corner, guys, and we know why. Shea Hoxton with that patented punt kick of his. That'll do you in. One, two, but it won't do with Fidel De La Rosa here tonight. Shea Hoxton beside himself, but following it up with the 21. Uno, dos. Still no trace. Unbelievably, Hoxton. Oh, to the top. Feeling froggy. To the outside. Elbow. Fidel. Fidel counters it. Rolls through into a scoop slam. Holy shit. What a matchup here between these two. Fidel. Back into the ring, this fight is taken at his behest. Hoxton scrambling to his feet. Oh, Hoxton letting Fidel know. 
about the muscles, about the 18-inch pythons. Wrong time, though. Kick to the midsection. Clay Hoxton never ceases to shut his mouth, even in the middle of a matchup. Even in the middle of a matchup as hotly contested as this one. A few shots to the midsection. Able to set Hoxton free. German suplex. Kick to the side of the head, man. De La Rosa eating it with a pinch of salt. Irish whip on the rebound, waiting for him. Crazy looking arm drag. Super kick to the midsection. Now it's Hoxton waiting on the rebound. Boot to the gut. God, that may have cracked a rib right there. And goes for the choke slam, but Fidel catches the arm and turns it into the Collar City Clutch again. The Collar City Clutch once again locked in. Shea Hoxton might not be able to escape this time. The Intercontinental Champion. Putting the pressure on, but Hoxton gets out of it. And now Jelani again causing the distraction, allowing Hoxton to hit the choke slam. God damn it. One, but a rope break. The ref doesn't see it. The referee didn't see the rope break. And Shea Hoxton makes off like a bandit here tonight on Octane. Off the distraction by Richard Jelani, Hoxton hits the choke slam. And even though Fidel was able to grab the bottom rope, the referee didn't see it. And so Shea Hoxton with a big win for himself here tonight. And now, of course, comes the showboating. Were this a fair one-on-one -on -one matchup, I think the result would have been different. But thanks to Jelani and thanks to the blind referee, might as well get the Ozakai in here to ref. It is our co-main event coming up next here on Octane episode 40, my friends. And of course, last week here on Octane, maybe one of the biggest upsets in CMB history. Look at how giddy he is as he comes out here. And for good reason, he pinned Bison the Barbarian last week here on Octane. The only man to defeat Bison since his return to CMB last season. Pinned the undisputable heavyweight champion and then put him through a table after the match. Amare Rivers has good reason to be so excited coming out here tonight. Looking to follow up on the biggest win of his CMB career. He's slid to go one-on-one -on -one with Morgan here tonight from one beast to another. Like I said before, this new season has been a phenomenal so far for the arsenal of justice. There's no denying it. And Amare's win over Bison last week, a big part of that. Of course, go to come guys up next in our main event tag team action to see Chris Diamond and Objorn take on the tandem of Jason Spade and Dave Turner. Momentum at stake as we head into the Deadly Games Tournament next weekend. Our first special event of the new season. A lot to look forward to.
Like I said, from one beast to another. As now Amara Red Rivers looks to become one of the very few people to ever beat Morgan one-on-one. -on -one. Only three people have done it. Since Morgan debuted here in CMB just about a year ago. Amber Reed, the Ozakai, and Danger Cat, the only three to beat this man one-on-one. -on -one. And so far here in the new season, undefeated, but I'm sure he's still feeling the effects of that beatdown at the hands of Joseph Santos last week here on Octane after Morgan put away Ben Stacy one-on-one. Santos with a kendo stick in hand wailed on Morgan. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some welts once he takes off that jacket. Morgan certainly managing to get under the skin of the rat in the hat. Literal goosebumps every time I see this guy make his way down to the ring, though. I'll tell you what, if Amar Ray Rivers can follow up on his win against Bison last week, defeating Morgan here tonight, I will eat my shorts. My very last pair of shorts, man. I'm putting them on the line. So here we go, Amare Rivers in high spirits after his monumental win against Bison last week. We're going to follow it up with a win against Morgan here tonight. Able to catch Morgan with that banger rag. Good start for Amare Rivers. Transitioning into a back suplex, a leg drop, great combo, vintage combo by Rivers. Is though Amar Ray Rivers has managed to significantly piss off the undisputed world heavyweight champion. Now he's got Bison fixing to hunt him down as if the loss wasn't enough. But then Amar Ray Rivers putting him through a table after the fact. Amar Ray just trying to sign his own death warrant. But he's proved he's more than capable of stepping up to Bison has done what no other man has been able to do since Bison returned. Snake Eyes in the corner pulls him out into a alley-oop. Quick pet attempt by Morgan. Only gets himself a one count, though. Clobbering blow to the back of the head. Morgan going to have to try to forget about Joseph Santos for the time being. Hope that he doesn't come out here with a kendo stick again. Santos had to be Reprimanded by security, man. Pulled out of the arena. He wanted to rip Morgan sh to shreds. And he would have if not for the top-notch security here in CMV. Who, when they actually do their job, they are somewhat good at it. Morgan going to walk to the ring. Amar Ray Rivers, though. Not looking to let him get away so fast. Arm drag to the outside. Followed up by a monkey flip. Morgan tries to get back up. Amar Ray going to hurl him into the barricade with a German suplex. Rivers deceptively big. Bigger than even Morgan here. Morgan now with the upper hand headbutt to where the sun don't shine. And a choke bomb soon after that. Up to a count of six already as Morgan trying to keep control of Amar Ray Rivers. Not so easy to get thrown head first into the LED post there. Rivers wants this fight back in the ring. Morgan happy to follow after him. Amar Ray coming up from behind with a forearm smash in the middle of the back. Tries again, but Morgan ready for him. Tooks him to the outside with a clothesline. Big 
Max Morgan now letting out a mighty roar. Amare back into the ring. Morgan immediately pounces on him, but Amare able to escape. Spins him around. Amare Rivers stretching Morgan. The accordion rack dropping Morgan flush right into the pin for another huge dub. Only a two count though for Mr. Rivers. He's not finished and we know what he's looking for now. Amare gonna go for that standing 450 splash. Incredible athleticism, say what you will about the man, but in that ring, he's something else. One, two, but it ain't gonna put away Morgan. Not here tonight, very frustrated at that fact is Amare Rivers. But a chance to stay in control, and he knows it, up to Brett's rope. Waiting for Morgan to get to his feet. Amare cooking up something. Oh, tries for a little cheeky roll up, but Morgan, Aloha Morgan, able to stop him and right into the spine buster. Quick to hook the leg. One, two. Two count only for Morgan, guys, but we know it simply follows up that spine buster. Cranking the neck to further wear Amare Rivers down. Just torturing Rivers. Bending every single part of his body. Rivers attempting to get back up, but instead Morgan with the hand up high, hoping for vexation. But Rivers went up to the side of the head. Morgan took a bit too long, trying to finish Amare off. Backflip into the German suplex. Amare waiting for him to get to his feet. Creeping up from behind for a standing sea fire. Into the pin. Can he do it? Yes, he can! Amare Rivers has pinned Morgan! Following up on his win against Bison last week. What? Hang on. Speaking of! Speaking of the Undisputed World Heavyweight Champion, Bison's in the ring, and he's looking to make Amare Rivers pay! Choke slam to Amare Rivers. And Bison making damn sure that Amare doesn't think he's gonna get away with what he pulled last week here on Octane.
Well, now, my friends, it is main event time here on Octane, episode 40. Some tag team action coming our way. And a momentum certainly at stake as it pertains to the Deadly Games Tournament. The eight men confirm. The eight men who will endure a night of pain and agony all for a shot at Jay Young's Global Championship on the very same night. And of those eight men, these four looking to be the one to outlast the seven others. Get that shot at the Global Championship. Potentially leave our very first special event of the new season. Leave Deadly Games with the Global Championship around their waist. But momentum is what it's about here in this tag team matchup. As the British baller, the Golden General, Chris Diamond, been pissed off this past week. But then again, what isn't Chris Diamond pissed off? Seems like he's always in a foul mood. I can't remember the last time I saw Chris Diamond smile. Maybe when he won the Undisputed with Heavyweight Championship. Even then, I'm not sure, though. But Chris Diamond, of course, eliminated by Josh Omega in that number one contenders battle royal a couple of weeks ago. Omega going on to win it. Diamond livid that a rookie was even given a spot in that battle royal. But now Diamond has to shift his full focus to this matchup here tonight into the Deadly Games Tournament. And his partner tonight, none other than Ugbjorn. Joined, of course, by his talent manager, Reese Matthews. Red Fox Industries in full swing here in the new season. Recruiting the Bogan Bros as well over on NGW. Last time we saw Obiorn though was that amazing matchup against Richard Jelani for the Rite of Passage Championship. Probably the best match so far here in the new season. Obiorn coming up short, but a chance to once again grab Destiny by the horns. And get himself that shot he's long been waiting for. That shot at a world championship here in CMB. With the lineup set, guys, we know that Obiorn will be facing Jason Spade in the first round. Chris Diamond will be facing Dave Turner in the first round. The other first round matchups being John Lipnick versus Ace Reeves and George King versus Troy Colt. But for Diamond, guys, this is certainly going to be very, very interesting. Not only here tonight, but especially at Deadly Games when it's one on one, taking on his former tag team partner in a Hall of Famer. Dave Turner, who can forget the Termination Foundation? Chris Diamond certainly has it. He said earlier this week that he's going to prove he carried Termination Foundation during their run. And he puts down Dave Turner. And you saw after Diamond lost that battle royal a couple weeks ago on Shockwave, going into the gorilla position, Dave Turner was there waiting, just shook his head. Almost as if depressed at how far Chris Diamond has fallen. Depressed the man that Chris Diamond has become. I don't think Jason Spade could ask for a better tag team partner here tonight, though. Of course, Dave Turner, a multi-time tag team champion. Jason Spade, also a former Unified World Tag Team Champion in his own right. Great timing indeed. It's our main event. Tag team matchup. Jason Spade did not start this season the way he would have liked, taking that loss at the hands of Jay Young in the first episode of Octane. But what a way for him to bounce back in the Deadly Games tournament and become a global champion once again.
So here we go. Momentum, of course, at stake going into the Deadly Games Tournament. Chris Diamond and Ugyorn up against the team of Dave Turner and Jason Spade. Diamond and Turner are going to start things off here. Looks like they can't wait any longer to get their hands on each other. Very weird-looking German suplex from Diamond. A lot of things are very weird about Diamond, though. As he quickly makes the tag to Ugyorn. Looks like maybe he doesn't want to dance with Dave Turner just yet. Gonna have to come the Deadly Games tournament, though. Oh, you're just gonna yeet. Dave Turner almost out of the ring. Again, guys, big week of action coming up here in CMV on the next episode of NGW. We finally crown a new NGW world champion. The finals are set. Sexton Stone takes on Trevor Hannibal. And Deadly Games next week on our first special event of the new season. Not only the Deadly Games tournament, but also that huge triple threat matchup for the Undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. Richard Jelani, Josh Omega, and Bison. We also know Maggie Shaw will be challenging Ashley Rain for the Women's World Championship. Rain returns to action on the next episode of Shockwave. As Ugyorn lays out Spade just tagged in with that military press power slam. And Spade unable to even step up to Ugyorn as he gets knocked down to the outside. And Ugyorn takes the time to cheap shot Dave Turner not once but twice. And a big fucking toss to Spade. Ugyorn running right now. Running rush off like a runaway train. Ah, Lee, hook of the leg. This match be over already. No. Only a one count as Spade pops back up. Only to be caught with a bear hug. Not for very long, though. Push back with Spade. Oh, sends him into the corner. Shoulder thrust and a belly to belly. My lord in heaven, bro. Up you're just decimating everyone right now. Tag to Diamond. Jason Spade say, get me the fuck out of here. Trying to make that tag. Getting ever closer, but Diamond going to finally stop him. Teasing him a little bit there. There we go. Spade finally with some offense. Shoulder thrust. Shoulder thrust again. Taking Diamond down to the corner, but a boot waiting for him. Up in the fireman's pair position. Jason Spade escaping quickly with some elbows to the side of the head. And now a mule kick. Jason Spade thinking perhaps about making the tag to Dave Turner, but. Well, his time thinking going to cost him. Goes for the hot tag again. Diamond once more able to stop him. Looks like Diamond doesn't want any of Dave Turner here tonight. Trying his best to keep Turner out. Again, there will be no escaping him, though, when it comes to the Deadly Games Tournament. They are one-on-one -on -one in the first round. Jason Spade certainly getting a taste of what he's in for when he goes one-on-one -on -one with Ugborn. Knee to the face by the outlaw. Diamond popping right back up. Of course, the Red Fox, Reese Matthews, watching from ringside. The Red Fox, who is destined to lead Ugyor to a world championship here in CMB. Moonsault from Brett Trope by Spade. Into the pin. But we have it one here for him. Dave Turner only a one count. Speaking of Dave Turner, there's the tag. Diamond not able to stop it any longer. Going to have to face his pass here. The Termination Foundation reunited. Not the way I would have liked to see it, though. Short arm drop kick by the British baller. And guys, we're not that far away from Ascendance 11, which we know will take place. The O2 Arena in London, England. The biggest Ascendance to date. Just a few months away, and we officially begin the road to Ascendance next month. After Deadly Games... Absolution coming our way. We know what that means. The beginning of the King of the Hill tournament. As the tag is made to Ugyorn. Dave Turner again almost launched out of the ring. Jason Spade offering his hand for the tag, but Dave Turner in no condition currently to make that tag big. Splash by Ugyorn. Hooks the leg. One count is all he's going to get. Hoping for a chance to catch his breath as he rolls out onto the apron, but I don't think so. Ugdor knocks him right down at the feet of Reese Matthews. He's going to put hands on Dave Turner here, picking him up. Ugdor going to turn his attention to Jason Spade. Some clobbering blows across the chest. 
one after the other and Spade sent down to the outside. Dave Turner back into the ring. Outdoor waiting for him. Another BFT. Outdoor is just running on something else in this matchup, boy. Another big splash. Spade begging for the tag. Oh, God. Triangle choke taking Turner up off his feet. Spade has to help. Strikes the referee in the process. He's got to be careful not getting disqualified. Look at Dave Turner though, man. He's completely unconscious right now. And Oh, you're looking to finish him off with the Claymore kick, but he evades it this Dave Turner. Strong to the chest. A Hall of Famer gonna try to finally make that tag, but took too long. Oh, Bjorn breaking free with some elbows to the midsection. And now a spine buster. Spine to the pine. Another pinball attempt by Ogjorn. Very slow pin. I guess the referee really affected by that punch by Jason Spade. Jason Spade does have a hell of a right hook. Big punch to the gut and a falling headbutt. Ogjorn firmly in control right now. Doesn't seem to be anything Dave Turner can do about it. As now he's dragged into the corner. Ogdor making a tag to Chris Diamond. Teamwork here between these two unlikely allies. A double axe handle to the extended arm. Chris Diamond perhaps trying for the 1916. Turning able to counter it. German suplex. There we go. Finally a sign of life by the Hall of Famer. He's going to use this opportunity to make the tag with Jason Spade. Chris Diamond though instantaneously nailing him with a jumping knee. Now gonna drag him over so slowly across the ring, but Jason Spade fed up with it. Elbows to the midsection. Finds himself an opening and takes Diamond down. Collar City Clutch. Collar City Clutch is locked in. But Ugjorn right there to easily break it up. Spade running Ugjorn down. In the meantime, though, Reese Matthews trying to take apart the top turnbuckle over there. Referee luckily saw him though, putting a stop to that. Up to the top rope goes Jason Spade. Could be looking for the ace in the hole. Indeed he is at ringside. A pump handle toss, but back in the ring. The pin is made. But it doesn't mean a win for Jason Spade. Back to the corner, telling Chris Diamond to get up on your ass. Get up on your feet, boy. Get off your ass. Another mule kick as Ogborn and Dave Turner continue to battle at ringside. Jason Spade doing all he can to maintain the driver's seat for his team here tonight in this Octane main event. Moonsault by Spade. The conniving Reese Matthews got to keep an eye on him. Put a canarana. Ogborn taking care of Dave Turner. Hops book up onto the apron. Jason Spade might be on his own right now. Alabama Salama. Hooks the leg, desperate as Spade, but Ugjorn there to make the save again. Here comes Dave Turner to resume his fight with Ugjorn. Reese Matthews again up on the apron. This time it looks like he's trying to distract Jason Spade, but the veteran ain't gonna fall for that. Bangman's neck breaker down onto the knee, sheesh. Now Spade in the corner, trapped though, as Diamond unleashes a barrage of kicks to the ribs. Tries for a stop, moves out of the way. Boot right down the goal of the British baller. That's blocked by Spade. Diamond with a vertical suplex, drops down behind. Shot to the quad, Diamond reeling. Dave Turner taking down Ogdorn at ringside. These two continue to beat the hell out of each other. Wait a minute! Break your neck foundation! Into the pin! One, two! But Jason Spade by the skin of his teeth. Diamond backing into the corner. If that doesn't take out Jason Spade, perhaps the super kick will. But Diamond still not content. Going for another break in neck foundation. And you gotta believe this time, it'll keep Jason Spade down. 
Oh, and it may have, if not for Dave Turner, man, getting past Ugdorn to make the save. Diamond gonna send him to the outside. Jason Spade still unable to recover, though, with the time given to him. Mishinoku driver. Spade desperately trying to crawl his way into the corner. It looks like Chris Diamond finally actually wants a piece of Dave Turner, though. He's going to let Spade make the tag. Maybe that was a mistake. Double leg takedown by Turner. Hammer fist trying to break through Diamond's defenses. Now it's Diamond regretting his decision, trying to make the tag to Ugbjorn. German suplex. By the technical prodigy of a Diamond rolls out of the ring. Dave Turner on top of him like a monkey on a cupcake. Brings him up in that fireman's carry position and going to ram him back first into the barricade. Bruce Matthews not moving. <laughs> he said, this is my spot. I'm staying here. Oh, but that might have been a mistake by Dave Turner. Allowing Chris Diamond to make the hot tag and back in his up yard. What a clothesline. Jesus Christ. Great tag team action here in our main event. Momentum on the line going into the Deadly Games Tournament as Turner makes the tag to Spade. Close line, toppling Ugdorn before he can get back to his feet. Spade tries to stay on top of him, but Ugdorn breaks free. Now trying to take Spade for a walk, but Spade not having it. Elbows to the gut. Spade has an opening. Snapmare sets him up for a drop kick right to the side of the head. Now Spade very tired. Trying to keep themselves fresh with these frequent tags. Dave Turner back in and met instantaneously by a big boot courtesy of Ugbjorn. Tag now to Chris Diamond. Tags, tags, tags here late into this matchup. All four of these competitors tired, you can tell. Diamond busted open, tag made to Jason Spade. Teamwork here. An assistant kick to the midsection. Diamond able to evade whatever Spade was trying for there though. Now trying to bring him into the corner, trying to go for a tag of his own. Some more tandem offense, but Jason Spade stops him, cannot avoid the mule kick. Getting hit with his own move there. Now Diamond trying to slow things down just a bit with these simple stomps to the hand, but that might do the trick. Let's see how aggravated Chris Diamond is getting. Spade gonna roll to the outside. Diamond goes for a suicide dive, but splat on the floor as Spade tries to continue going after Ugdorn, giving Diamond a chance to throw him off to the side. Once again, Chris Diamond stomping on Spade's hand. As we've touched on before, so many small bones in your hand that are so easy to break. You really don't even need that much pressure. And a broken hand certainly going to go a long way in incapacitating someone like Jason Spade. Can't use his hands, can't hit the majority of his maneuvers. Can't lock in the Collar City clutch, can't set up with the lands of Burgle Bottomy. Shining a wizard by Diamond. Up to a count of 10 here already. Of course, they have until 20 to get back into the ring. Now 11, guys, getting into dangerous territory as Diamond just lights Jason Spade up. Diamond potentially looking for a count-out win here. He might get it. Jason Spade is in bad shape, guys. Diamond takes the time to make the tag to Ugbjorn. Is Ugbjorn going to allow it, though? Looks like he is. Ugbjorn going to utilize the opportunity to take out Dave Turner with a back suplex down onto the apron. Spade is back to his feet. The count has been reset. Again, a single knee backbreaker. Jason Spade can go ahead and cancel that appointment with the chiropractor later this week. Unborn. <laughs> Readjusting his spine there. Back into the ring we go once again. Jason Spade in rough shape after eating the Break Your Neck Foundation twice. And now, gonna taste Odin's curse. 
one, but a one count is all Upgrowin's gonna get, even if that, as Dave Turner very easily able to make the save there. Too close in the corner. Oh, God. Oh, Fjorn. Military press, power slam. Mason Spade needs to make the tackle. Look at Reese Matthews jumping around, celebrating at ringside. There we go. Great counter by Jason Spade. Made in the Claymore kick. Ooh. Sidekick from Spade. Some real oof behind it. And Jason Spade going to go to work on the legs of Ugjorn. Trying to take out his base. Trying to stop Ugjorn from throwing around his power. Maybe a bit late in the matchup for a strategy like that. Spade instead just going to try to land Zimberg Lobotomy, but Ugyorn able to reverse it. Into a sidewalk slam. Jason Spade lands on his feet and into the Collar City Clutch. What a back and forth right there. Collar City Clutch is locked in. Collar City Clutch is locked in. Chris Diamond to make the save, though. And now Ugyorn rolling to the outside. Trying to collect himself. Dave Turner goes right after Diamond, just completely ignoring Ugorn. Termination Foundation reunited here tonight. And Dave Turner lays out Diamond back, suplex down onto the apron. Here comes Ugorn. What a clothesline. Again, to take off the head of any typical man out of the audience here tonight. Dave Turner able to very barely keep his head on his shoulders as Ugjorn sends him back into the ring. Dave Turner to his feet. Again, going to make a beeline for Chris Diamond. Unable to focus on the legal man, Ugjorn. That's going to give Ugjorn a chance to go after Jason Spade. Spade just cannot catch a break in this matchup. Back suplex onto the eight right now. Dave Turner into the ring. Good God, man. Now this matchup is just completely falling apart. All four of these guys just beating the hell out of each other. Ugg Jordan and Dave Turner are the legal men. Jason Spade again dropped on the apron. Referee I'm getting his count once more. If I were him, I might just call for the disqualification at this point, though. These four are obviously not giving a shit about the rules at this point. Ugrown with a choke bomb. Laying out Spade on the floor. Up to a count of six, guys. Looks like Ugjorn finally deciding to come help out Diamond. Leaving Jason Spade to... Oh, Reese Matthews catching a stray there. A punch to the back of the head by Dave Turner. He deserves it, though. And finally, this matchup resumes properly in the ring. A catch. Dave Turner with a wicked big boot. Turner quick to make that hot tag. Get himself the hell out of there. A big boot for Spade as well, but Spade able to block it. Sidekick. Anyway, standing moonsault. Jason Spade still standing. That in and of itself is impressive. Taking the break in Eck Foundation twice. Eating Odin's curse as well. That's Jason Spade, though. Son of a bitch don't know the meaning of the word quit. Oh, he catches! Oh, he throws the lands of Berg Lobotomy, but Ogre just throws him off right in the pin. No help from Dave Turner this time, guys, as Ogre collects the dub for he and Chris Diamond. Tag Team Warfare here in our main event, but the team of Diamond and Ogre are going to collect themselves some momentum en route to the Deadly Games Tournament. Will it be one of these two men that survives the gauntlet that goes on to challenge Jay Young for the global championship? I can see either one of these guys going down as the third ever Deadly Games 
tournament winner. Well, we'll find out next weekend.